Hello everyone, uh, my name is Joe Fairley and with Ascent Fabrication. Uh, so today for Fabrication Friday, uh, it is June 3rd, uh, we are going to go through uh, taking a look at, you know, what is a good 3D scan. Uh, what do we mean by, you know, a scan is either good or bad, um, how to evaluate a, a scan uh, when you're actually looking at it in the uh, in the software once you have already taken the scan of the patient. So we're starting out here in Autodesk Mesh Mixer. Uh, this is a free program uh, available for download from Autodesk's website. Um, it's currently not being supported as they are trying to move the functions and features of Mesh Mixer into Autodesk Fusion 360. Uh, so that's something to uh, just be aware of and take into consideration. Um, that Autodesk is not supporting Mesh Mixer uh, moving forward. So uh, taking a look though, uh, there are a lot of good tools in Mesh Mixer to be able to help clean up 3D scans um, and just to take a look at some of this 3D scan data. So what I've done today is I've prepared for you uh, several different scans and we'll kind of go through each one and what the um, how good each scan is or how bad each scan is. And uh, they've been scanned with different scanners. So we'll kind of go through, um, you know, what that means for, for the different scanner types. So what could you scan, right? You could scan the directly over the patient's skin. You could scan over a gel liner that the patient has over their limb. You could scan the inside or outside of a cast. You could scan the inside of a test socket after it's been spray painted uh, a matte black. Um, go to your general hardware store, find some really cheap spray paint, spray the inside of that test socket really nice so you cover it. And it's an easy way to um, capture the inside of your test socket. Um, with something like Comb, the Comb app on an iPhone 10 or newer. So there might be some other scanners out there that are capable of scanning uh, that type of topography, but Comb is the one that we would suggest uh, for trying to scan um, any patient's limbs or um, the inside of a cast or a test socket. So uh, the main reason behind that actually is because you can get uh, fairly close to the actual Thing you're scanning. Um, so that's definitely beneficial when we're talking about being in front of a patient or, um, you know, having to scan within a test socket or, or cast where we might have some undercuts um, and trying to get nice and in close as we can to make sure that we get all those undercuts. Um, what I would say when you're scanning a patient or whatever else um, is going in a very smooth and slow uh, motion um, and trying not to go over the same area too many times or repeat areas uh, that could end up with some overlap of the scans that um, might also be a little detrimental in terms of the overall circumferences. Um, so let's first take a look at um, this scan here, this below knee scan. Um, so you also could, you know, scan a positive mold that you have already uh, done your hand modifications to. Um, you know, I would argue in, in some cases that may be needed if it's a very intricate case. Um, in other cases, um, it would be definitely good enough to go from uh, scanning the patient themselves over a liner and doing digital modifications uh, in a particular software. So. If we think we've gotten a good scan, uh, this scan was taken with the Autobach, the new Autobach Easy Scanner. Um, and I believe this was a scan of um, the a modified um, residual limb model already. So this scan came in as an STL. So we don't actually see any color from uh, from this particular scan. If we were to export something as an OBJ file, we might see some color. Uh, for example, if we take a look at 
this scan here of a Symes patient, we can see actually some red areas uh, on this patient's skin where, um, where that color actually comes through. Or if the practitioner has actually indicated on the patient's limb uh, or over the liner with clear wrap wrapped around the liner and using a Sharpie, black, blue, red, uh, doesn't, doesn't quite matter. Uh, but to actually outline areas giving us regions where we have particularly bony anatomy that we need to be aware of. So let's get back to the, the good scan. Um, what I would say by a good scan is that looking at this, there are particularly no holes in the scan. Um, so if I'm going to evaluate, you know, whether or not a scan is good or not, I'm looking for holes, you know, gaps in that scan data um, where we don't have enough uh, overlap of the scan itself to uh, make sure that we actually capture the anatomy as it presents. So this would be particularly a good scan of an already modified mold. Um, you know, different things that we can do to clean this up as well. Uh, if we wanted a nice flat top surface, we can do a simple plain cut in here. If we go to edit and plain cut, we can actually make a nice smooth top surface. That would also be nice for 3D printing, particularly um, if I want to get rid of any kind of artifacts that don't give me a nice smooth top surface, I can get something like that. Okay, so again, uh, having Autodesk Mesh Mixer is a nice uh, tool to be able to clean up some of your scans. Um, if you'd like some instruction on Autodesk Mesh Mixer to um, to be able to clean up scans yourself, please reach out and uh, we can do some one-on-one -on -one instruction for you. Um, okay, so we have a good scan here, right? Now let's talk about a scan with artifacts, okay? This scan particularly came in as a scan of the, um, the kind of inside and outside of a uh, definitive socket that we were making a foam flex air flexible inner socket for. Um, so you can see here again with an OBJ file, we're able to outline areas where we want um, the, um, you know, to pay attention to any bony anatomy. So color really does go a long way if you're gonna be sending us 3D scans, uh, especially for trim lines as well. You can indicate trim lines on the scan. Uh, and then I know exactly where that uh, trim line has to go. So when I talk about holes in the 3D scan, this would be a good representation of holes, right? There's actual gap missing here um, of this scan data where I would then need to come in and clean up this scan in order to uh, process it for a device that we're going to make. When, I, when I'm working with a scan like this also, you know, what I call an artifact is something other than what I'm actually going to be working on that I don't necessarily want to see in the scan. When we have a, a large area that has been scanned like this as well, the level of accuracy and detail uh, decreases somewhat. So we really only want to scan what we want to scan, not nothing, nothing else outside, kind of those bounding boxes, if you will, uh, on some of these scanners that you see. So really zone in on the patient model or whatever else that you only want to scan uh, in order to get the best detailed scan. Um, if I'm gonna go ahead and clean up uh, some of this other uh, artifact data, I can go to edit again. I can do a plain cut. And you see how this is grayed out. If I just alter that, that then is going to be grayed out. Uh, maybe I don't want to fill anything quite yet. Again, we'll get into the nitty gritty of some of these um, Autodesk Mesh Mixer features in a one-on-one -on -one session with you if you'd like. Um, so I can go ahead and plain cut and then those disappear for me. 
a different way that I could do that. Um, if I knew that this was all one solid piece, I could say separate shells and it would separate this artifact from the shell of the socket um, to keep it plain and simple. We'll just go ahead and do another plane cut here. We'll move that plane out of the way so we're not actually affecting the socket and we're getting rid of what we don't want. Okay. So then say I'm going to uh, clean up this scan a little bit so that we have um, closed up these holes. In order to close up the holes, we can use some of the sculpt tools. If we go to surface, brushes, robust, smooth, turn down the strength, turn down the size of our tool cursor, and we can start to close down these holes a little bit. Now, there are new little nuances in terms of you know, how and why we would want to do this. If we increase the strength, that will work a little bit quicker for us, but you can see I'm quickly modifying uh, the socket itself. So if you're not careful, you can alter the scan too much to where you actually affect the fit of the socket. So um, again, get with us in some one-on-one -on -one instruction to uh, learn how to clean up your 3D scans if you're looking to do that. Okay, so that was a scan of the definitive socket, the inside. Um, this socket we actually cleaned up and uh, fabricated a foam flex air flexible inner socket for, and then a 3D printed frame on the outside of that. Getting on to a, an above knee scan. Okay, this was an inside scan of a test socket. Um, and this was done with comb. Uh, so as you can see, the scan is open-ended at the top. That can present its own problems, you know, as we move forward. So typically we want to work with a completely closed off scan. Um, and in the one-on-one -on -one instruction, we can um, show you kind of more how to do that. What you do see here actually are some areas that are very smooth and other areas that are rough. Um, the sculpt tool here again, if you're on surface, brushes, robust, smooth, maybe we turn down the strength to about 30, increase the size, the diameter size of our tool. We can go around and actually smooth out um, some of these contours a little bit. So that would help us kind of clean up the scan again to make a nice smooth surface to be able to 3D print. Um, you'll notice too that doing this will clean up any jagged edges of a 3D scan in Mesh Mixer. Um, again, we're using the robust, smooth brush um, with the surface tool on, not volume. Um, so that's how we are cleaning up um, some parts of this scan. Okay. So I would say, again, this would probably be a good scan as I don't see any large holes. Um, the roughness in the scan itself um, kind of just comes from, you know, that level of detail we can get with the scan. I forget exactly how this test socket was set up to uh, scan the inside, uh, whether it was just wrapped on the outside with fiberglass or, or something else. I don't believe it was... Um, it was spray painted, but you can see the level of accuracy. We do see, you know, the um, the umbrella shape of what was provided there for this locking um, socket here. So looking at um, coming from kind of the same AK mold, uh, this is directly over the liner itself. Uh, so you can see that there are duplicates of uh, this sample uh, stamp that's on our casting liners. Uh, this indicates to me that a, um, the scan was kind of overlapped and you can see this kind of jagged edge where the scanner tried to uh, fix this edge. So I would honestly say, you know, this would probably be a redo of a scan um, if you're looking to get a more accurate scan. 
Um, also, much, much more was scanned in this uh, over the patient's limb than really needed to be. Uh, so all these artifacts would need to be cleaned up. Um, these are little holes in the scan data that would also need to be cleaned up. Um, so really, I would ask that, you know, something like this would be re-scanned um, moving forward. Take a look again at the, um, the SIMES scan that we have here. If we use the edit tool and go to transform, uh, here's where we can take a look at the scan and move this into the orientation that we want to look at it. Um, as you can see in the local view, we will be, uh, as we move the scan, the axes move with the scan itself. We really want to be in the world view where everything is perpendicular to the grid that we're looking at. Okay, so if we get this into an orientation that we're happy with, we can take a look at this scan. Again, um, maybe a little bit more was scanned than really needed to be. Um, it looks like posteriorly where we see the blue outlines, there might have been some small holes um, down here as well in the posterior. So these would be little areas that we could clean up. You know, again, if we go to sculpt and surface and brushes, robust, smooth, maybe turn down the size of the tool, turn down the strength slightly, and we can start to close up those holes. A different way to do this would be to use our select tool, select the area around where we want to close up the holes, go to edit and erase and fill. If we have selected the areas completely around those holes, it should completely smooth out that region. I wouldn't change any of these settings. Those are fine for our purposes. If we hit accept and clear selection, now that area has been completely cleaned up. Uh, we might notice here as well that there are um, a couple other small areas we could clean up. If we use the select tool again, select that area, edit, erase and fill, accept. Then we can go back with sculpt and surface and brushes and robust smooth. And we can smooth out that area if we want to. Taking a look at this, so this was scanned with comb directly over the patient's limb. Again, in an OBJ file, we were actually able to get the color to show up here. Um, this little wrinkle here along the anterior means that there might have been a little bit of overlap, but it seems to be fairly negligent and it looks like it very well stitched the scan together. So I would just come in here increase the strength of the tool, use the, the robust smooth to actually blend the surface together to get this ready for our clinical modifications. Maybe I only want to go up to um, the area of the scan where I have as much scan data as I possibly have. I can come back in here with the edit and plane cut tool and get this in an orientation where I'm going to be perpendicular to keeping as much of the scan as I possibly want. If we do say remeshed fill, that's going to give us a completely solid um, scan. In some instances, depending on what we're actually designing, we do want a remeshed and solid design. Um, so we could say accept for that. And then we have a completely solid positive model to work with. Going on to the next SIMES example, um, again, taking a look at the color that was used to indicate hot spots on this patient's limb, we can come in here and try to sculpt surface, brushes, robust, smooth, try to close up that hole here in the scan. This is fairly effective. Maybe I turn up the strength. That would just increase the speed of which it's actually doing this for me. 
um, if we take a look and we see that there are uh, very sharp lines into this one point and it's not really fixing itself we can come back with the select tool select this region edit in erase and fill and accept clear that selection and then we have a nice smooth uh, closed surface okay so this would be again ways to quickly clean up a 3d scan um, as you're doing this, watch your strength because you may be reducing the model slightly in places. And if you try to do that, say over the fibular head where I'm doing this pretty aggressively, you might actually flatten out that region. If I control Z, you can see how much I've actually affected that model. So just be careful about the strength of the tool that you're using. If I turn down the strength here, and do this again only slightly, you can see that I'm affecting much less of the scan itself, okay? Um, so we can take a look at then looking at the hand that we have here. This was, um, again, already an STL file, which didn't bring any color for us. But if we take a look at these holes here, um, we really want to try to clean up these holes as much as possible. I would almost argue in some cases, if you don't know the topography of the patient's limb, um, it could be fairly problematic that you have holes as large as this. Uh, in this case, we were able to help uh, this clinician and the, amputee, or, and the, and the patient, sorry, uh, to close up these holes and create a good scan to work off of. If we take a look at uh, then one scan of a prosthesis with a structure sensor, uh, which the structure sensor, depending on the um, actual version of the device, honestly might not be as accurate as we are hoping for. The structure sensor was built to uh, scan what you see here almost an entire room um, and at that level of detail it's just not as detailed as we might uh, want it also again we only want to scan what we are uh, actually looking to manipulate and here we see an entire ground surface with a you know a, a tool bench here was actually scanned with the prosthesis um, that might affect our circumference measurements over this particular socket um, as we're trying to make a cover, a prosthetic cover for this. Um, the proximal circumferences over the socket might not exactly match up with, um, with the cover, so that could be problematic. Um, in order to clean up a scan like this, maybe again we come into edit and do a plane cut. and only affect what we actually want to work with. And so there we get rid of anything that we don't want to work on. Um, if we take a look, uh, this would be if they tried to scan the inside of the socket here, they only scanned a portion of it. Um, you know, so again, we're looking at scan data that doesn't really exist. Um, you know, we would have to, if we wanted to scan the inside of the socket, that would be kind of a complete redo of this socket. All right, guys, so that was a little bit more of a brief uh, introduction to, um, you know, what would be considered a good scan versus a bad scan. Um, take the time to really uh, go through, uh, you know, doing the testing with your particular scanner or test out different scanners to make sure that you're comfortable 3D scanning anything that we've mentioned here today. Um, so a, a patient's limb, the inside or outside of a cast, the inside or outside of a socket, um, or over a positive mold. Uh, these are all things that we could be 3D scanning. Uh, and I would argue that any patient that walks in the door, you know, taking a 3D scan over their skin would give us um, very detailed, accurate measurements um, that could be put into the patient's chart for justification purposes. 
um, and then that is consistent every single time. Whereas if we are using hand measurements with a paper tape, say, um, you know, that's different from person to person, so it's not quite reliable. Um, and from you know circumference measurement to circumference measurement, you may be pulling tighter or looser depending on you know just how you're actually taking those measurements. So again, I would argue you know take a 3D scan of the patient when they come in the door over their skin um, to really get nice um, justification data uh, for the insurance companies. So thanks again, guys. I know this was a little short today, but just wanted to kind of cover, you know, what we're looking for for a good scan coming into a scent fabrication. So thanks again. Um, uh, have a great weekend and happy Fabrication Friday.